Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, after back-to-back padded practices, the Raiders are off today. So I'll give you an update on who stood out good or bad, expectations I have for certain players moving forward. That plus a whole lot more comes up on Thursday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast for August 3rd, 2023. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn win is a Raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome in, Raider Nation, to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts to get the latest edition of the show. Of course, as always, if you're checking us out on YouTube, thank you, man. Really, I can't say it enough. The, the podcast, the page has grown in such a major way on YouTube, over 7,000 subscribers, and that's all because of you, Raider Nation. So we do appreciate that. And, of course, we got to give a little bit of a shout-out as well to my man Ari, who uh, plays a major role in that YouTube page as well. He makes sure we're up on YouTube each and every day you can check him out on twitter at ari produces you can hit me up on twitter as well at your boy q254 or the lockdown raider podcast voicemail line 707-654-4693 i got your calls and texts coming up in segment number three of today's show segment number two i'll give you a full recap of the first couple days of padded practices now that the raiders are off today and really specifically i'll, I'll focus in on uh, on wednesday's practice just because i uh, talked about day one of padded practices quite a bit already so really we'll focus in on day two but then also talk about expectations expectations for certain players moving forward that all come up in segment number two of the show here in segment number one as I always do I like to hit you with the news and notes of the day so let's go ahead and jump right into it as uh, the Raiders made a roster move official on Wednesday when they signed tight end Jacob Hollister he replaces OJ Howard who was released on Tuesday, the Raiders put out a piece saying that free agent tight end Jacob Hollister was signed to the team on Wednesday. He's played with the Vikings, the Raiders, the Jags, the Seahawks, and the Patriots in his six-year career. So he's added to the tight end room with Austin Hooper, rookie tight end Michael Mayer. Of course, Jesper Horstead is there as well. And now Jacob Hollister, a guy that's just nothing flashy, but you kind of know what you're going to get from him. He just adds more depth to that tight end room. Not saying he's going to be a guy that's going to make the 53-man roster, but right now, added depth in the tight end room. And Michael Mayer, I think that Raider Nation is really going to like him. I know he had a rough day on Tuesday on the first day of padded practices, but again, he was going up against Max Crosby. So it's kind of funny as we talked to head coach Josh McDaniels on uh, on Wednesday morning before practice, he kind of said, yeah, he had a rough day. It was talked about, but he had a really good attitude. He bounced back. He never hung his head. So at some point, uh, in, in Michael Mayer's career, or maybe when it's all said and done, he's going to go back and look and think back. I remember that first padded practice going up against Max Crosby. Didn't work out too well. <laughs> but that's just how it is. That's the nature of the beast, right? I think there's always times in our lives when we go back and look at something that we did for the first time and realize, yeah, that wasn't so good. It's, it reminds me of the first time uh, I went out for uh, for the baseball team when I was a youngster in Little League, and I went to the tryouts, and they threw 20 pitches at me, and I swung and missed at every one of them and cried like a you-know-what, <laughs> right? I was so upset that I couldn't hit that damn ball, so my dad took me to the, the batting cages and wouldn't let me leave the batting cages until I was hitting that ball consistently. So that was, you know, that was like the first time uh, playing baseball. I remember I was like, man, and so that will always stand out to me. But, you know, just like I did in baseball, Michael Mayer will have much better days <laughs> than he did in his first padded practice going up against Mad Max Crosby. Uh, also on Wednesday, the Raiders had some players in for uh, workouts, including Jalen Smith. Uh, my guy Jordan Schultz from thescore.com sent me a text saying free agent linebacker Jalen Smith is working out for the Raiders right now. 2019 Pro Bowler had 88 tackles, three tackles for loss in a sack last season for the Giants. He would reunite with defensive coordinator Patrick Graham, with whom he spent one season in New York with. And that's all said and done. That's all good right, that he has familiarity, familiarity with Patrick Graham. But unfortunately, Jalen Smith is not the Jalen Smith he was when he got hurt in Notre Dame. He never was that guy in the NFL. He had some good moments with the Cowboys, but not enough good moments with the Dallas Cowboys. So I think that they just brought him in just to kind of uh, take a look at him, see where he's at, uh, extra depth if they need it. But it's just one of those things that I think Dave Ziegler and company are doing a really good job of bringing guys in, taking a look at them. It's nothing that they're trying to sign them right now. But again, just kind of kicking the tires and saying, all right, this is what this guy brings to the table just in case we need him. Jalen Smith is not uh, Jalen Smith that I would do a backflip over if they signed him. He's not going to be that difference maker, but he's extra depth. And at one point, man, before he had that bowl, that bowl game injury uh, when he was at Notre Dame, he would have been that dude. 
he would have absolutely been that dude. He just never was able to recover uh, the way that the way that he wanted to or anybody else wanted to after that injury he had in the bowl game. Also, from my man Ari Mayrod from the 33rd he tweeted out that the Raiders brought in former Browns and Jaguars defensive back Ronnie Harrison for a workout on Wednesday as well. So they're continuing to, you know, tinker with the secondary. But again, just like with Jalen Smith, just – you know, just a little look-see, just to see what he's got, see if he's able to bring anything to the table. As far as guys that didn't practice on Wednesday, of course, running back Josh Jacobs, who we all know doesn't have a contract, so he's not going to be there. Edge rusher Tyree Wilson, cornerback Brandon Faison, defensive tackle Neil Farrell Jr., defensive tackle Byron Young, running back Austin Walter, all guys that were not practicing on Wednesday. And it sounds like uh, Faison, according to uh, uh, head coach Josh McDaniels, really avoided a serious injury. What it looked like was a serious injury when he was carted off on the practice field on Wednesday when we got to talk, or on Tuesday, I should say, excuse me, but when we got to talk to Coach McDaniels on Wednesday, sounded like, you know, he's not, obviously wasn't going to practice on Wednesday, but sounded like it wasn't a major injury that he suffered. And then Walter was injured early in the week as well. Speaking of head coach Josh McDaniels and the conversations that we had with him on Wednesday before practice, I asked him about Tyree Wilson and Neil Farrell Jr. And the reason I included Neil Farrell Jr. in that conversation is because I saw a tweet from Neil saying that, you know, you, you put in the work and good things will happen or something like that. Something to that extent. I'm just paraphrasing there. But it sounded like, okay, maybe he's on his way back. So you'll hear my question to head coach Josh McDaniels about Tyree Wilson and Neil Farrell Jr. Uh, if they're closer to coming back. Are there any updates on uh, Tyree Wilson and Neil Farrell? Are they on closer to getting back? They are, um, you know, day by day. So it'll, uh, again, I think both guys are doing a great job of everything they're being asked to do, which is, which is great. Um, they're in every meeting. They're paying attention. They're studying. Um, you know, they're doing all the things that they can do at this point while they're getting closer to returning. So um, no, nothing, same thing with Byron. They're all in the same boat. So um, as soon as they're ready, they'll be out there. You know what I mean? And, the, and, again, I can't say enough about the way that our training staff's working, about the way they're working to get out there. They want to be out there. They're itching, and, um, you know, like I said, as soon as they're ready to go, they're going to be out there. So there you go. Sounds like he's pretty pleased with where they're at right now. Obviously, they're not able to practice, right? And Tyree Wilson hasn't practiced at all so far in training camp, but he's there. He's doing all the classwork. So hopefully when he's able to get out on the field sooner rather than later, he'll be able to get out there, practice, and participate in a major way. Everyone is looking for the debut of the number seven overall pick, the young man out of Texas Tech. Another question that was asked to the head coach, Josh McDaniels, was about wide receiver Trey Tucker, the third-round pick out of Cincinnati. Not a guy that's you know, fighting to make the, the team because he's going to make the team. You don't draft a wide receiver in the third round and all of a sudden cut him in training camp or after training camp. Now, I know it could happen. But I just don't see it happening, especially uh, with Trey Tucker, the way he's been out there participating and playing and doing a really good job in the in the kick return game. He's learning the punt return game. And I'll tell you, as a wide receiver, he's looking pretty good as well. So here's head coach Josh McDaniels talking about wide receiver Trey Tucker. Yeah, very, uh, very mature guy. Um, very bright. Um, you know, his talent, you know, I think is, you know, you, you, you everybody saw that, you know, coming out in the draft and. Um, but he's a very uh, good fit relative to our, our group. And um, he, he learns very quickly. And I think that's a really good trait to have for a young player. Um, he's not a big air repeater. He can take something, a correction, um, and then try to you know, make that correction show up on the field the next opportunity that he has. Um, like every young player, he'll make some mistakes. He's still got a long way to go. But... You know, relative to the way he goes about his business, um, you know, that mature, uh, intelligent approach, you know, really works at it, tries to make sure he takes the corrections to heart um, and then implement them in his game. Um, I think he's been he's been great to work with. Um, really excited about, you know, continuing to do that. So nothing but good things. So far being said about wide receiver Trey Tucker, he's a guy that I talked about on Wednesday's show as uh, being in a big-time camp battle with, uh, with DeAndre Carter, a guy that I believe is very similar to him. And it's funny, uh, I asked Adam Hill, who's from the, the Review Journal, also works on our sister station, ESPN Las Vegas, and uh, I asked him when he was a guest on my radio show on Wednesday about Trey Tucker and the camp battle between him and DeAndre Carter. And it's funny, as much as I'm giving Trey Tucker a lot of high praises, Adam was giving DeAndre Carter a lot of high praises. So again, it kind of lets you know right where they're at as far as the battle goes. Both guys are really doing a, a good job, but I feel like with Trey Tucker being the younger dude, 
Trey Tucker being the guy that they drafted. Obviously, the guy is making less money than uh, DeAndre Carter. I could totally see Trey Tucker getting the role of DeAndre Carter and uh, DeAndre Carter being let go. Not that he doesn't deserve a roster spot, but of course, it's a numbers game. And if they could find another guy to play another role and they feel comfortable with Trey Tucker taking over the role that they had expected for DeAndre Carter, I could totally see him happen, that happening. But it's early in camp, so we got to see a lot. And of course, every year, there's a guy that stands out that ends up not really being you know, too much of anything once uh, once the regular season happens. So I don't know. Maybe that's Trey Tucker. Maybe that's DeAndre Carter. Maybe it's neither. Who knows? But uh, right now, there's a lot of uh, thumbs up when it comes to wide receiver Trey Tucker. And the final soundbite I have for head coach Josh McDaniels from uh, Wednesday from his media session that he had at the Intermountain Healthcare Performance Center was just about the first day of padded practice. And I mentioned it, that physicality was the name of the game. And it wasn't quite as physical on, uh, on Wednesday, but on Tuesday, it was all physicality. So we asked them about that physicality uh, on the first day of, pr- of padded practice and if that was something that they did intentionally. It's really the same thing we did last year um, on the first day. You know, there's, you know, you have to, you know, there's pros and cons of that. You make a decision on, you know, whether or not you're going to do a little bit of that. We thought for our young players, you know, especially, you know, having an opportunity to actually, you know, not have to worry about necessarily like restrictions and all that might be a, a better way for them to start, you know, getting acclimated a little bit where, okay, I, there's, you know, I'm not going to get yelled at if I end up on the ground here. Um, so it was good for us to be able to put some plays on tape and be able to coach off of that. Um, but, you know, it's, we have few opportunities uh, to get into pads and work all the techniques and fundamentals that we need with contact um, that obviously everybody's going to need to do well uh, to be a good football team. So uh, we'll try to see if we can't string another day together today. So there's head coach Josh McDaniels right there talking about the physicality and you know, it was something that he was happy about, you know, put some good stuff on on film and, you know, was able to see the guys and what they can do with the pads on and football as every player that we talk to and every coach that we talk to football's played with pads. Football is physical and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make a fast, tough, physical football team, smart football team. Those are some of the characteristics of what they're trying to put together for this 2023 silver and black unit, right? I mean, it's just simple as that. They're trying to have the speed. They've increased that through the draft and free agency physicality. They've done that through the draft and and, and free agency, right? And of course the players that they have like Mad Max Crosby, who's about as physical as it gets uh, the guys that they bring back like a Bilal Nichols, obviously the offensive line, they've added some beef, some size, right? Some competition there. Uh, They're just trying to make this a fast, physical, strong, and smart. I think most importantly, a very smart football team as well. So I'll give you a recap of of, uh, Raiders practice number two, their padded practice number two that they had on Wednesday. Uh, Who stood out to me good? Who stood out to me bad? And kind of my expectations for some of the players moving forward. We'll do that coming up in segment number two after I tell you about LinkedIn jobs. And these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. All you got to do is you got to post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL and let people know. Add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. That'll spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd like to hire. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hire versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find that qualified candidate you want to talk to faster. Again, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to give you an update on Wednesday's practice. It was the second padded practice that the Raiders have had. They're off today, so kind of want to go over what I saw, who stood out, who didn't stand out, what my expectations are for certain players moving forward. And off, off top, man, I got to admit what happened on Wednesday that was kind of embarrassing and, and almost made me hit the panic button, right? And that was the fact that we're out there. We're paying attention to everything that goes on, right? We're trying to pay attention to as much as possible. Sometimes I'm focusing on the defense, which is kind of far away. Sometimes I'm looking at special teams, wide receivers, whatever the case may be, right? I mean, there's so many different players all over the place that you got to, you know, kind of, kind of survey the field as much as possible. But at one point, I looked up and Vinny Bonsignor looked up and we looked at each other and was like, wait a minute. Where the hell's Jimmy G? Where the hell's number 10? He's wearing a red non-contact jersey, and we lost Jimmy G. How in the hell did we lose Jimmy G? 
And like I said, I was kind of embarrassed by that. <laughs> right? I was like, wait a minute. I felt like I was in an episode of like, where's Waldo? Right? Where's Jimmy? I kept looking around and I'm like, okay, he's not over there. I see all the other guys. I see Hoyer. I see Chase Garbers. I see Aiden O'Connell. I don't see 10. 10 in a red jersey. Where in the world did he go? And of course, you know, nobody who's on the Raiders staff is going to say, oh, this is what happened. This is what happened. Oh, he went in for this or that. And I'm talking to Vinny and I'm like, man, dude, this guy did not get injured. He's been playing. He's been out here practicing. There's no way he got injured and went into, you know, the, 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 the facility. And we didn't notice, right? And he's like, no, I, I, there's no way, uh, no way that that could have happened. So, of course, we, you know, we started walking up and down the sidelines. We were asking a couple people here and there, hey, man, did you notice Jimmy G walk off the field? And that's when other people were like, no, I didn't see him. So I came to the conclusion. This was my conclusion I came up with when Jimmy G exited the field and I didn't see it. There was, there's three fields out there at the Intermountain Healthcare Performance Center, right? So the one that's next to us. They were all practicing on that field, and then they sprinted over to the middle field, like sprinted. It was, it was something that was very noticeable. And then they ran about five or six reps on that middle field. Then they sprinted back to the field that, that we're closest to. Somewhere in between there, Jimmy G walked into the, the weight room because the weight room was right there next to that middle field, and that's how we lost them. There, there had to be, and maybe that there was a couple people around them because when they were at the middle field, you really could only see the backs of certain guys. You couldn't see everyone. It was kind of like they were lined up on uh, sideline, sideline, and, and really we were looking at the back. So I'm assuming that he got walked into the weight room right then and there, and that's how we lost him. After doing some research and talking to a few folks, we did realize and find out that it was nothing to be concerned about. Uh, Jimmy was on a, a, on a planned pitch count. He wasn't going to be out there for the full practice. That was for multiple reasons, including a, a teaching moment for the players just in case uh, all of a sudden you have one quarterback out there and then all of a sudden another guy has to jump in there. You got to get used to a guy with a different cadence. You got to get used to you know a different guy throwing the ball. And it's something they've been doing quite a bit anyway, rotating. Plus, they're not going full throttle with Jimmy G right now anyway. The goal is to get him to the regular season. It's not to get him through the second padded practice. It's not to get him to the off day. It's not to get him through the second weekend. It's to get him to the first week of the season when they're in Denver taking on the Broncos. So uh, that's something that they're going to do periodically. Not a big deal. But I'll tell you right now, man, all I can hear in my head, no joke, Raider Nation, is Bill Belichick saying, you had one job, Q. You had one job. Your one job was to watch 10, and you lost them, right? So even Vinny for a minute started to panic, but then we realized what, what was going on and, and that we weren't the only ones that, that lost them. There was a guy, I'm not going to name him, there was a guy who acted like he saw everything. It was like, well, you know, I just didn't want to report it. It's like, come on, dude. <laughs> come on, man. Like, st stop selling wolf tickets, man. You know you didn't see him. You didn't see anything until I actually said something to somebody else, and he overheard it, and then that's when he jumped into the conversation. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that was, that was the one quick moment of uh, practice on Wednesday where I thought I completely failed. <laughs> I completely failed at my job. I literally have one job out here, and that's to, you know, Pay attention to anything that could potentially be big that happens. And the one big thing, Jimmy G no longer practicing, could have been big, and I missed it. But, again, I don't mind admitting that that happened and really getting a good laugh after I realized that it wasn't a big deal. But a couple other things that stood out from uh, the second padded practice that the Raiders had on Wednesday was that the secondary, led by Marcus Peters, looked a lot better. Right? I mentioned on, uh, on Wednesday's show that on Tuesday, Marcus Peters didn't look very good. I knew that he was still getting his sea legs under him. I know he's still trying to get into shape, but, you know, there's a few plays on balls that I thought he had a chance to make that he didn't. And on uh, Wednesday, he made the plays, right? He lined up in one-on-one -on -one drills against Devontae Adams, which is never easy. And Devontae ran a quick route, and Jimmy hit him, and it looked like he hit him, and Marcus Peters dove and got the, his hand in, in there and knocked the ball away. So that was the first good play. Then a couple of plays later, he's lined up against Chris Lacey, and uh, he ended up intercepting the ball. So he got his first interception of camp that was off Jimmy G. So it was a really good play that he made. And again, Marcus Peters looked really good on Wednesday. So it's just a tale of two days, right? That's why we can't overreact to one day of practice. Don't want to get too high or too low. Just like when I mentioned that Monday, Jimmy didn't have a very good day. Tuesday, he bounced back, had a much better day. Wednesday, he had a half day. So they're off today. We'll see what happens on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when they take the field as well. But Marcus looked a lot better. Uh, the secondary lock looked a lot better. Speaking of Marcus's, Marcus Epps looks really good. He looks the part. He's the guy that the Raiders brought over as a free agent from the Philadelphia Eagles. And, you know, it's so funny. I was standing there and I was watching him and he made another nice play, breaking up a, a ball in the middle of the field, just getting his hand in there, had a nice quick release and boom, just got the ball out. Right. So he's done that now about two days in a row, once on a Hunter Renfro, past the Hunter Renfro, and then 
The other one, I believe it was either Cam Sims or Chris Lacey or maybe it was Michael Mayer. I can't remember, but uh, Marcus Epps came through and made a nice little play. So I, I looked over at one of the media members that were there and I said, hey, man, uh, Marcus is playing some pretty good ball. He's having a pretty good training camp. And the guy said, yeah, I'm actually surprised. And I kind of looked at him and he said, I'm not surprised because he's not a good player. I'm surprised because he was a guy that went to the Super Bowl and the Raiders signed him as a free agent. And a lot of times when teams sign a guy that just played in the Super Bowl and, and they give him a nice free agent deal, it doesn't work out because that guy fits in really well with that team that he went to the Super Bowl with. But he's not really that guy when he leaves that team. But Marcus Epps, who's still a young dude, looks like he is that guy. Marcus Epps looks like he's got the, the production. He's got the ball skills. He's hungry. He wants to go out there and make some plays. So he was making some plays. He was looking good. The secondary was looking good. Uh, it was Peters, Bennett, and one time Amik was lined up in the slot. Another time uh, Nate Hobbs was lined up in the slot. Another time Tyler Hall was lined up in the slot. But they looked pretty comfortable. But the two things that were common denominators was Marcus Peters on one end and Ja'Cory and Bennett, the rookie, on another end. So that's something to pay attention to. Zamir White's been getting plenty of burn. Uh, Britton Brown's been getting pretty, uh, pretty, plenty of burn. Sincere McCormick, same thing uh, with Josh Jacobs out. Zamir White looks good. Zamir White, uh, when he put the pads on, right, you can see a lot more about the running backs. You can see the physicality with the offensive line, defensive line. And there was one play on Wednesday where he hit the hole and he just kept running. I think he's still running. <laughs> right he hit that hole he squared up his pads and he's not the fastest dude he's never been known to be a burner but man he took off he looked like a he looked like a a, a guy that got shot out of cannon just boom hit that hole and was gone kept on going you saw the back of his jersey and you saw about three Raiders defenders chase trying to chase him down and he was gone really good play he's been looking good in uh in, in practice especially with the pads on that's something where the running backs you can start to learn a lot about them sincere mccormick i thought he did really well also uh, amir abdullah has been doing really good in the screen game and the catching game out of the backfield so that those are some things to ex uh, get excited about and then trey tucker i don't even have to talk about trey tucker right been talking about him a lot He's definitely been looking good. As far as injuries go, again, Jimmy G left. That's no concern. That wasn't injury. Brandon Face on, according to head coach Joshua Daniels, sounds like he's going to be okay. Uh, he escaped major injury. Uh, there was one injury scare from Wednesday. That was offensive lineman Justin Heron, who's coming back from a torn ACL, just got cleared the other day. He went down. O blank is what he yelled out and grabbed his knee. But uh, a few reps later, he got back into it. He was he was out there. He looked pretty good. He talked to head coach Josh Daniels, confirmed that he was okay. You know, he did a couple reps on air and felt like he was fine. Boom, he went back out there and was doing doing his thing. So uh, looks like he avoided a knee injury. But I'll tell you right there, uh, when he grabbed his knee and he yelled out, oh, blank, I thought, yep, there goes that ACL again, just because, again, he's coming off a torn ACL. Now, as far as some guys that I still have a big question mark about, of course, Trayvon Merrick is at the top of the list. The one thing I'll say about Trayvon, I know I've probably been pretty harsh on him. Him and Marcus Epps as a tag team out there, those safeties, they haven't given up any big plays. Now, Trayvon Merrick hasn't made any plays either, but he hasn't given up any big plays. So that's, you know, that's something to, to you got to tip the cap to him for that. I would like to see him step up and make some plays and let it be known that he's out there. I mean, everyone to a T keeps saying the same thing I'm saying. 25 is out there, but he's just out there. I don't know if he's thinking. I don't know what it is. He just doesn't look like He's that comfortable out there yet, and that's that's concerning. This is a year three for the guy, so he's really got to step up, or you know, he could find himself on the outside looking in. Who knows? But Trayvon Merrick continues just to be out there. Uh, Jermaine Illuminor, he actually talked after practice on Wednesday, and he said he felt good because it was the first training camp he's ever gone into as a starter. I'll tell you right now, I don't know how long Jermaine Illuminor is going to be a starter. I don't know if he better rest on that, you know, hey, they penciled me in as a starter because he hasn't done anything to impress me yet. Right. He's he's had multiple false starts. He's had to run multiple laps. Uh, he stands by himself a lot where he looks like he's just kind of talking to himself. And I get it. Everyone's just uh, you know, everyone's demeanor is not to be hanging out with everybody. But normally offensive linemen stick together and it just doesn't seem like he's done that. Carmen Brasillo, the offensive line coach, has been in his ear, sometimes aggressively, sometimes just coaching him up. But uh, I did hear him one time say, hey, we're not going to be the reason. We're not going to be the weak unit. You know, don't let us be the weak link. So he's been getting coached up pretty hard by Coach Brasillo. And really, I feel like, you know, he's, I don't want to say he's on thin ice, but he's also got to show something. He's a, he's a guy that, again, hasn't stepped up and done anything too major. Thayer Munford took a lot of first team reps at the right tackle position as well. So there was times where Illuminor was getting subbed out. Uh, Munford was coming in for him. So that's a little camp battle to pay attention to. Illuminor and Thayer Munford, see what they can do. Malcolm Kuntz, I was asked about him a couple days ago. He talked after uh, practice as well, and his media session was about a minute long. <laughs> right? He didn't have hardly anything to say. And you know why? Because he hasn't done anything out there on the field. 
right? I, he did mention something about being more comfortable because year two in the system, but he didn't do anything in year one. Uh, I'm really down on Malcolm Koontz. If there's a big roster move that's going to be made sooner rather than later, as the Raiders have brought in different players and checked them out, I would not be shocked at all if Malcolm Koontz was on the chopping block. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know if they're trying to trade him. I don't know if they're trying to find someone that may may want him, and I don't really know what you can get for him at this point. Maybe a super late-round pick or a conditional pick. I just don't see anything when it comes to Malcolm Koontz. But, you know, again, the the battle between De- DeAndre Carter – Trey Tucker, I continue to I want to continue to see that grow. I think it will. I want to continue to see Aiden O'Connell get some reps to see what what he's got. You know, to see if he could bring anything to the table. Chase Garbers as well. Wouldn't mind seeing him. We're going to see a lot of those guys during preseason. You know, you won't see Jimmy G out there, but you know, those are some of the guys that I'm really paying attention to and looking for Merrick to step up, make some plays, make, looking for a Luminor to step up and, and show he's got something. And Malcolm Koontz, let us know you're there. <laughs> right. So again, the Raiders are off today. They'll be back at it on Friday. And of course, we'll be out there covering it like a glove. And I'll bring everything I can to the podcast here, uh, the Locked On Raiders podcast. Coming up in segment number three, your calls and texts throughout that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line 707 654 4693. This is the Locked On Raiders podcast. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and texts throughout that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line 707 654 4693. Let's start things off with a call from Nathan Glass. He's talking about linebacker Robert Spillane. Remember, Nate's a Steeler fan, and Spillane comes from the Steelers. So here he is, Nathan Glass. Hey, Q. Nathan Glass from California. Calling you from this hospital bed. But I just listened to the podcast, and I had to set the chime in on you talking about Robert Spillane. Check it. You remember I called you as soon as you guys uh, signed him, and I wasn't blowing smoke. I called you frustrated that we didn't resign Robert, and I also called to congratulate y'all because I told you you got a football player. You got a guy who loves the sport, loves to hit, loves contact. Yeah, I understand the has coverage and all that, the guy can hit. And he was valuable to my team with the ANC North being a running, uh, and pretty much a run first um, um, division. He was very valuable to us, and I hated to see him go. But I'm happy you guys are enjoying him. I, uh, I hope everything works out for him and you guys, and I hope that he becomes the linebacker that you guys been dreaming about for some time now. And that's pretty much it, Q. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm missing. I mean, we revamped our whole little linebacker core, so let's see what happens. But, I mean, it's still to this day, man, I miss Robert. I miss Delane. And, um, but I'm glad he's with my other favorite team, the, the Raiders, and it is what it is, and uh, that's it, Q. So hopefully I'll get up out this uh, hospital bed soon, and uh, of course, even though I'm here, I'm going to be tuning in every day faithfully, because I appreciate everything you do. All right, Q. Nate out. Nate, thanks for the call, my man. I appreciate you, brother. And first and foremost, hope you're feeling better or as good as you can, right? We all hope for you to get out that hospital bed soon. As far as Spillane goes, I mean, he's a guy that makes me laugh. He really does. He's a guy that you can clearly tell loves ball. On Saturday when he talked to us at the Intermountain Healthcare Performance Center, he just, he, like I said, he almost made me smile and laugh, and I didn't want to smile and laugh at him for no reason. I just, you know, I just... It just seems like that's all he thinks about is ball, ball, and ball. He's a physical dude, as you know. He brings the physicality. Uh, he, he's excited about going and getting the ball or at least trying to rally the troops to go get the ball. I asked head coach Josh McDaniels about Spillane on, uh, on, <laughs> on uh, Wednesday before practice. And a uh, matter of fact, here, here's, what I had to, or here's what Coach McDaniels had to say about Robert Spillane. Real quick about Robert Spillane. We met with him on Saturday, and he seemed like he's just hungry to get out there and now put the pads on and everything. What have you seen from him? And how much better can he make this defense? Yeah, he. Uh, I really enjoy being around Rob. I mean, he he fits in really well with our group. Um, he's a communicator. Uh, he's really tough. Uh, he's all about football, and you know he's he's a he's a good leader. And so, 
Um, you know, you, you want that in the middle of your defense. You know, uh, we want to be a tough group. We want to be a smart group. We want to try to, you know, take the ball away as much as we can. And, and Rob gives us an opportunity to do some of those things and improve, you know. And so uh, I think his teammates really respect him. Um, he's a really hard worker, uh, adamant about trying to do things the right way. Um, you know, I think he's made a huge impression on our team so far. There you go. Head coach Josh McDaniels talking about Robert Spillane. And again, he's just a guy that loves ball. I don't know what his role is going to be with this team. We know in coverage he's not great. So I kind of want to see what the rotation looks like. I have no doubt Spillane's going to make the team. I have no doubt that he's a leader. He brings some toughness to the team. I just want to see how Patrick Graham and company put him out there, what he can do to help this team out because coverage is something that they need from their linebackers. And that's something Spillane does not excel in. So thank you so much for that call, my man. And like I said, I hope you feel uh, better moving forward. Up next, got a text from Raider 07. That's Matt in Little Rock. He said, what's up, Q? Raider 07, Matt in Little Rock. My question is with Chase Garbers being waived and re-signed, do you see him making the practice squad and giving a chance to show his worth in preseason? Love what you do. Shout out to you and Ari. Go Raiders. That's from Raider 07. That's Matt in Little Rock. And, yeah, with this uh, re-signing of Chase Garbers, I definitely believe he's a practice squad guy. I definitely think he's going to get a lot of burn in preseason. Jimmy G's not going to get any. Brian Hoyer doesn't need any. You know who Brian Hoyer is, right? <laughs> you know what he brings to the table. I think you're going to see a ton of Aiden O'Connell, and you'll see a ton of Chase Garbers, and then you'll see Chase Garbers be put on practice squad. I, I just That's my gut feeling on how it's all going to shake out, but that's just, like I said, that's my gut feeling, so we'll see. But Jimmy G in preseason it's not going to be a thing, and, and Brian Hoyer in, in preseason doesn't need to be a thing. Maybe, maybe one drive, but outside of that, doesn't really need to be a thing. So thank you so much for that text. I do appreciate you. And thanks for the love on the show for both me and for both Ari. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate you. Up next, we got a call from Jordan in Oregon. He's calling to talk about the dogs on the team, who he looks as potential dogs, and also speaks on Hunter Renfro. Here he is, Jordan in Oregon. Hey, what's going on, Q? Jordan from Oregon. Want to call in. You're doing a hell of a job on the coverage of camp. Um, called in last week and just kind of got a couple of your opinions and takes on, you know, how many – uh, dogs on the team, not DOGs, but you know when I'm talking about the DAWGs, the the dogs, and you, you were saying, you know, you see three, and and you see three right now, and that was Marcus Peters, Max Crosby, and Devontae Adams. And so hear me out on this, though. What if Jacorian Bennett and Tyree Wilson end up fitting that DAWG? What if, what if those guys pan out, man? We could be uh, cooking with grease, as you would say, too. And then on the other side of things, uh, great to hear about uh, Hunter Renfro having a good camp. And, you know, that interview, or I should say the presser that, that the Raiders put out, it was spot on with what you could actually, like, read that out of Hunter last year. There'd be several times he just looked looked a little uh, disengaged is the wrong word, but he just wasn't the same Hunter. And it was good to hear him speak on that and just be completely straight on that because from what we're hearing out of camp, he's just been tearing it up. And and um, I'm pretty excited about that. I was thinking about Hunter. What if he, he turns it on and ends up becoming one of the dogs for us too, Q? And then, you know, this short passing game, I'm getting pretty pumped up about. I honestly, you know, for since we've hired McDaniels, kind of thought this would be to what we hang our hat on. And last year, it was a little bit of everything. And so – I'm excited the guys are gelling with Jimmy, and uh, pretty much as of right now, it sounds like a lot of our offense is going to be based on on short short to intermediate routes with a hell of a run game. And, um, yeah, be excited with all your coverage, Q. Peace out, bro. Jordan, thanks so much for the call. I appreciate you. And as far as the dogs, those guys that you mentioned, Bennett, Wilson, they've got to establish themselves. Like, they very easily could end up being dogs at some point, but – you can't just walk into the league and be a dog, right? You've got to establish that. That's something that, you know, you've got to earn. And so for Tyree Wilson, he's got to get out there on the field. He hasn't even been out there on the field yet. Now, I think he has the potential to be that guy. I don't know if it's going to be right away. I mean, look, Max Crosby wasn't even really that guy immediately. Everything he did his rookie year, that was unexpected. Nobody knew who Max Crosby was coming out of uh, Eastern Michigan until he was who he was coming out of Eastern Michigan, right? Until he had the 10 sacks uh, his rookie year. It's like, man, this Max Crosby, dude, he can go. Obviously, everyone was really introduced to him in hard knocks, but uh, what he was able to do his rookie year was fantastic. Then all of a sudden, he put himself on the map and established himself as a dog. Wilson could be that guy. Bennett might be that guy. Trey Tucker might be that guy. I mean, there's a lot of guys that could be that guy, uh, but they, they, they have to establish themselves. They have to go earn that. As far as Hunter, man, he looks like the Hunter of old. 
He really does. He looks like probably the best guy out there that's not named Devontae Adams, <laughs> right? He just, he looks that stinking good. He's unguardable. I don't care who you put on him. They're not guarding him. He's shaking everybody. And, you know, I think that him and Josh McDaniels have an understanding now. I think Josh McDaniels knows how to use him, what he's capable of, and, and, and what he does to be that guy. So I, I think that you are going to see some good things from Hunter Renfro this year. I really feel good about that. So thank you so much for that call. I appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Cy Reezy in the Bay. He said, can there be a real winner in Merrick versus Smith battle? Smith shows instincts and anticipation to stay ahead of the play, but lacks NFL speed to recover. One wrong move and the play is over for Smith, like Jamison Williams exposed in the SEC championship game. Merrick has speed, but sounds like he's mentally behind the play. Neither sounds like a complete player, so can they find a way to use their skills to complement each other? That's a tough one. Cy Reezy in the Bay. And thanks so much for the text, my man. It's great to hear from you. And I'll say this when it comes to Chris Smith. He might not be the most athletic dude. Deron Harmon wasn't either. But if that guy studies film, knows what he's, you know, knows what he's looking at, knows what he's seeing, then yeah, I do think that there's ways to overcome the lack of athleticism, right? He's athletic enough to come up with six balls the last two years at Georgia. I mean, he's he's not again, I don't think he's gonna go and turn into Earl Thomas all of a sudden his rookie year. But if he's showing a little something, then yeah, I think that there can definitely be a winner between Merrick and Chris Smith. And I think it could be Chris Smith. Because Merrick hasn't shown anything in three seasons. Well, two seasons going into his third season. You know what I mean? And, and he hasn't shown anything in training camp at all. At least I see Chris Smith lining guys up, telling guys they're lined up in the wrong spot. That's a rookie saying, hey, you're lined up wrong. Hey, move over, move over, move over. Trayvon Merrick, I never even hear him. And I like Trayvon Merrick. Like, the way I talk about him, it sounds like I don't. I was a huge fan of Merrick coming out of uh, TCU. When the Raiders grabbed him in the second round, I thought it was a steal. I thought he was a first-round guy. I talked to him all the time in the locker room. But, man, he's got to show up. It's not about me liking him. He's got to go out there, and he's got to make some plays. He just hasn't made any plays as of yet. And so he's got to show why his uh, roster spot is worthy. I don't think he's going to get cut, but I could see you know them looking at him and saying, hey, he's on a short leash and kind of doing, doing him like they did Gary on Conley when they, they drafted Trayvon Mullen, and they weren't ready to put Trayvon Mullen out there immediately. But once they got – once they felt comfortable with them, and I know this was a different staff, but once they were comfortable with them, then they decided to move on from Gary on Conley and give Trayvon Mullen that full-time spot. I could totally see that happening. Again, I don't think that Merrick is going to go anywhere this year, but I could see his, his play time severely get reduced if he doesn't step his game up. Training camp, preseason, that's going to be big for one Trayvon Merrick. Uh, got time for one more call. Stealth B Raider from uh, Virginia. He's calling to talk about his relation with the silver and black colors. Also talks about training camp specifically. Trayvon Merrick, Tyree Wilson, and a couple others. Here he is, Stealth B from Virginia. Hey, Q, what's up? This is Stealth B Raider from Virginia. little story to tell you. Born and raised in L.A., been a Raider fan for over 50 years. Always had the colors of silver and black around me. Matter of fact, uh, played with Greg Townsend, the great defensive end of the Raiders, Pop Warner, for the Watts Wildcats, and our colors were silver and black. So always been wearing the silver and black. Hey, much agree with you. Trayvon Morick drives me crazy as well. Uh, I've been watching the man since he came into the league, and he might as well be a Christmas ornament on some of these plays. So I'm looking forward to either him getting turned around and making plays or being on the sideline because I can't take it anymore. For Tyree, question for you. I know he's at the camp, but is he – doing any kind of drills, or is he just sitting? I wish that Josh would give us a little bit more information, just uh, not, you know, just not lean the song, but give us something that we can bite off into because around 50-plus years of being with the Raiders, I understand what people have problems, and we kind of shield them. But you got to let the people know what's going on because it gives them a little bit of hope that we're moving forward. Anyway, Q, just wanted to call, let you know you're doing a great job. And uh, maybe I'll see you in one of the games when I'm out there this uh, this year in the in the next couple of months. Anyway, take care and go Raiders. Thank you so much for the call. I appreciate you, my man. Nice story about the Raiders and Greg Townsend. Good dude. Uh, had an opportunity to talk to him not too long ago. He's a really really good dude. Obviously, he was a hell of a player as well. Merrick, as I mentioned before, plenty of work to do. You know, he's got to be get involved as a playmaker. He's got to show who he could be. Tyree Wilson's got to get out there on the field. I feel like he's getting a little bit closer, 
uh, just based off of what head coach Josh McDaniel said. But again, that's based off what Josh McDaniel said. We haven't seen him out there, but we keep hearing that he's, you know, in the classroom. He's doing all the stuff he's supposed to do, which is the same thing we heard about Jimmy G until Jimmy G was ready to go out there. So hopefully Tyree's out there sooner rather than later. Uh, but right now it's a no-go for the number seven overall pick. But Stealth B. Raider from Virginia, thanks so much for that call. I do appreciate you, and that's all I got time for on today's show. Uh, we'll have a text tomorrow from Southern Indiana Raider. Got a couple other calls that I have lined up as well. We'll have news and notes. And Josina Anderson from CBS Sports, she had put out a tweet that I mentioned on Wednesday's show about Josh Jacobs and the fact that the Raiders are, are willing to re-engage conversations. I talked to her on my radio show on Wednesday. Really good conversations, about 20 minutes long. I'm actually going to bring the part of the conversation about Josh Jacobs to the podcast tomorrow, not the whole conversation, just what we were talking about when it came to Josh Jacobs. That'll be on the podcast as well. Cause I thought it was a lot of really good stuff from Josina Anderson, longtime NFL insider and definitely appreciate her time. So that'll come up on tomorrow's show again, news and notes. And we'll have more calls and texts as we close things out. So until then, Raider nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always just win baby.